everybody to the first ever primary source media live stream. Um, and we're coming to you live today. That we're all really excited to see Franklin starring Michael Douglas. And I watched it, thought it was wonderful. Uh, but I wanted to talk about it with someone in particular, someone who I thought would be able to provide some insight to this show that isn't available anywhere else. And to that end, I've invited the doctor himself, the master printer, the almanac writer, Dr. Ben Franklin here to the live stream. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Excessively pleased to be joining this conversation in this new format and excessively pleased to be speaking of this remarkable pageantry that is, well, a love letter to myself. Uh, very happy to join this conversation. Oh, thank you for being here, Dr. Franklin. And first question for you, what was it like seeing yourself portrayed by an actor? Uh, well, I, I don't know that in a thousand years I could fathom someone portraying me, but I will give credit to the gentleman, Mr. Douglas, on his very grounded portrayal. Uh, I have, in the course of my life, endeavored to cultivate a a duality, a, a man who is comfortable in court, but ever even amusingly aware of his station. I'm the seventh son of a seventh son, the son of a candle maker. My vocation was a printer, a, a tradesman, uh, which in my time was of, at best, the middle class. For the pageantry of Franklin, I'll be speaking with kings, courtiers, noblemen, the highest echelon anyone can uncover. It, it's a remarkable facet of one's life that I think can be easily lost in the modern world mm. where several years of our Republican form of government have put forward a, an equality amongst men where we may see station in the form of, of wealth, but certainly not of blood. And so I, I think they captured that excessively well. Mr. Douglas has a remarkable aside to the young man who plays Temple, my grandson, to remember your place, remember your station, when he spends a little too much time frolicking with the Marquis de Lafayette, who uh, I, I also am so incredibly pleased uh, to have seen portrayed so well. Uh, but, um, well, I will confess several things regarding Mr. Douglas. One, uh, I, I do not know what diet they put him on for a standard Franklin, but it's certainly the most svelte I've ever seen myself in the course <laughs> of my life. <laughs> and my compliments equally to his peruke maker, because the gentleman has an excessively fine head of hair, a little too fine for Franklin. But hmm. he captures uh, uh, the je ne sais quoi, uh, I think, that, uh, well, if I, I flatter myself in saying, I, I have tried to cultivate in the course of my life. So I, I was uh, uh, pleased, and, and I will confess to you, there were some instances where uh, I looked uh, upon the remarkable viewing device, the fantastic invention that is the modern television. And, uh, well, I had trouble discerning whether it indeed was memory or recreation. It, it was a, a remarkably immersive experience. Oh, well, that's an incredibly high praise. And and, and I, I suppose, you know, it is uh, the, the nature of Hollywood to have a flattering portrayal of yourself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as, you know, movie stars go. Um, I'll explain what movies are at another time. But Would you please? Because I've been waiting for months for someone to. I know all about TikTok. I know all about going viral. But there are some things that still elude me. I'm waiting for the proper uh, modern teacher. It's much like a television show, uh, like like the, like this portrayal was, but a, a little slightly different. I see, um, I see. It, speaking of the portrayal in the television show, I was curious to get your read because i am a non-expert in your life and 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 the things that you've you've experienced mr douglas's portrayal of you felt very confident um almost uh, uh, given the circumstances of why he was there do, was it appropriate to display him so steady in the waters it didn't feel as if there was anything wavering him the, there was a lack of nervousness that i was curious to know whether that was a pro, uh, real or is part of the artifice of the television show uh, i'm an individual who in my time was well regarded for what in your modern sensibility you might call a poker face hmm. it might surprise you to know when i returned to the colonies, the soon-to-be independent states, after a decade in England, 
I was highly suspected for my political leanings, suspected by the American colonists for being loyal to the king, perhaps even a spy to the king. Uh, one individual will write that the suspicion is almost synonymous and equal to guilt. Uh, of course, very quickly through conversation, conversation being the prime method which I prefer things to be done, uh, that was discovered. My allegiances were known, and I contributed the various things that solidified my position in the founding of America. <laughs> and so I, I do not know if I can call it confidence that I saw in Mr. Douglas, and perhaps it's because I'm aware of the machinations of my own mind, but I do believe the show painted the stakes of the circumstance, what was at risk everywhere except on the face of Dr. Franklin. And I, I know not if that was done deliberately to demonstrate the poise that Mr. Douglas wished Franklin to have that I certainly don't think I had, but certainly the uh, devotion to the game. And I, I do think that is what is going to be incredibly evident and clear through the progression of the series. That last line of the first episode, uh, the, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's, uh, we're going to battle. This is going to be a chess match. This is going to be, uh, for all intents, a series about warfare without ever having to visit a battlefield. Mm. Uh, and I, I do believe the opening credits demonstrated that excessively well. The, the game, the masquerade, the, um, the stakes are high. Uh, I do believe... Um, there was a demonstrated poise that I know not if Franklin had at every instance, but my time in France uh, was delightful to the French and entirely frustrating to the Americans. Uh, I will have several friends, friendships fall away. Uh, I was not incredibly known for discretion. In fact, from the beginning, Mr. Douglas makes the remark that he had known that we were being followed. Mm. He demonstrated it as if he had sheer omnipotence and calm. Uh, and while perhaps there were instances where I was aware of that, there were plenty where I, I, I did not know, nor did I invest the proper care in demonstrating an awareness of my surroundings. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I'm curious to see how that will play out through the rest of the series, um, you know, as things get uh, a little bit more complicated. Because this episode, there was a lot of, um, to use a French term mise en place, like setting the table, everything, what like all the characters. What a, what a delightful expression. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, uh, it's used in um, French cooking, meaning to, you know, do all your chopping ahead of time so that when you, it comes time to start throwing things in the pan, everything is ready for you. Um, but this, uh, oh, Dr. Franklin, uh, are you still there? Oh, I'm still, I'm still. Okay, sorry. Yes. It was uh, the, uh, uh, it's getting a little choppy on my end. But, uh, there were some interesting scenes there, you know, and then the dramatization of, of this history. Was everything to your memory? Like, do you, do you remember all of the events that took place in, in that they displayed in the show? Uh, memory is a, a very um, flexible thing. Yeah. Uh, and um, the awareness that it has been some 200 years, events are in long time. one's own memory. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were certain ingenious devices that I found particular delight in. Uh, the first introduction betwixt myself and Monsieur Bonmarché, uh, the introduction betwixt myself and uh, Virgin. Uh, Virgin, I think they did a remarkable job de demonstrating the, the simultaneous reluctance and avoidance and um, desire to curt and curry greater favor. Um, for all intents, my arrival in France one, I, I was pleasantly surprised in the manner with which the show did this. Hmm. So the, the journey to France was the roughest I had ever been at sea. Uh, the, the miserable weather that we inherited in the first shot went deliberately through the two-month journey, a miserable Oof. time at sea. Uh, I did not look presentable. Uh, if I remember correctly, I, I had lesions and boils and, and for all intents looked a ragged thing. And of course, Mr. Douglas could not look ragged if he tried. <laughs> even even the most bedraggled, he has the perfectly coiffed hair. And um, I, I, I made landfall exactly where they said, which I, I was fretful. The first shot of the show would have the grand arrival to France and would right. have 
Paris. Someone stepping out amenable yeah. and that was not the beginning of the story. I, I arrived in France in pure secrecy and anonymity, which they did remarkably well. There was even um, a moment, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, Mr. Douglas, as myself, uh, gave money to the Roman, which is, is customary, but it also brought me back to my first arrival in Philadelphia, <laughs> which was an equally a terrible landing. I, I'm one for making miserable landings, but <laughs> landing perfectly on my feet at the same time. Uh, and assisting in the rowing, which I did when I first arrived in Philadelphia. So there were small nods of who I, I am that I think were established in different moments. And I know not whether those are consistencies in the scope of my life, but it remarked upon that particular instance. When I arrived in Philadelphia, I assisted the Roman. I took what bare funds that I had to ensure that they were paid. I, I made some mm. remark upon it that um, it is more important to give when one has little money. Um, mm. it, it maintains greater, greater honor. And so uh, there's that moment where Mr. Douglas arrives on the coast of Brittany, and he looks out across the sea. And I okay. sat and wondered in that moment, was he, was he looking towards England? That's was, he, was he sitting and looking out? Was he thinking of the colonies he left behind or was he thinking of his other home? Because when huh. one considers from the entirety almost of the issues betwixt ourselves and Great Britain, from the Stamp Act the Declaratory Act, the Townsend Revenue Acts, in all the time that our revolution was blooming, uh, blooming in the colonies, I was in England. That was my home. My plan was to retire there. My plan was to spend the rest of my days happily uh, amongst the friends and contemporaries that I had made. And once I arrived back in the colonies, made the stance. Those who would not stand with this cause, which e even in the earliest times was a very British cause. I, I have the opinion that the American Revolution is one of the most British things we could have done in favor of, of liberty. Hmm. Um, but in that moment, I wondered, what, what is Mr. Douglas looking at? What is he thinking of? There was a, a great deal in his eyes, which I, I, I think is a credit to himself as an actor, that he was able to paint that, that, that they were able to capture that moment. Um, and then, of course, there was the long journey by carriage. And Temple and myself had several inns we had to stay in along the way. It was not a carriage ride straight to France. And even after we arrived in Paris, we had to contend with the Parisian customs house. And, and mm -hmm. they, they painted it to some extent. The gendarmes were aware of it. But the, the reasoning as to why Franklin was there, they made the remark that you'd, perhaps Franklin is there to buy a villa. Perhaps he's there to, uh, to retire. Perhaps he's, he's fleeing the American colonies. There is a ring of truth in that. Uh, at the present m moment, uh, Silas Dean had been the, um, the American emissary there. And even that was with some secrecy, because what is an American emissary? Oh, they're, they're a political refugee. Um, the truth of our Declaration of Independence had not truly resounded at that point. So there was no American diplomacy, which means my very presence there was extra legal. Sure. Which in a court of intrigue is the most fascinating position I could be in. Yeah, they, yeah, it, they actually brought that up or, or, or declared it pretty uh, plainly that you're, there's no official reason for you to be here <laughs> or you're not there in any official capacity. But like it seems to be, it was the worst kept secret <laughs> in, in, um, amongst Paris and Versailles at the time. There's, and yeah, of course, there are, the, there are the little meetings with these individuals that are, are wonderfully lost to history. Yeah. And you always have to wonder when you're endeavoring to do some recreation. And this is even true in, in the work that I do in this present moment, when you're endeavoring to recreate or uh, in this field, I believe it's interpret these varied events. How, how do you stay true to the historical fact but mm. take the liberty to keep a public informed. And I think they did this very, very well and remarkably in the instances of both Beaumarchais um, with Vergen and of course with the, the wonderful and, and beautiful Madame uh, Brienne de Joy. Uh, meeting Beaumarchais established several things. One, they met in a theater. And, and what is this pageantry if not theater? So. I was very pleased to see the theater had a presence. But Beaumarchais is rehearsing The Marriage of Figaro. In that, they tell the audience immediately, this man is the playwright of The Marriage of Figaro. He's a theatrical. He's eccentric. 
uh, Franklin is suddenly there in a humble capacity. Well, why would this instance ever be recorded? This this right. simple simple event. Now, Beaumarchais is going to play a a fascinating and an wholly almost exaggerated role in how this Treaty of Alliance comes into play. He will eventually branch out on his his own, and he will start. We'll see if the show does this, inventing outright lies about America, saying, um, you know, we're in a position that is significantly better than we actually are. We have hmm. guns. He, he'll, he'll continue to con curry these various favors to his advantage. Beaumarchais plays a fascinating role that, that moves into spycraft, espionage. Um, he's a fascinating figure. And then, of course, there is Virgin, uh, the, the meeting that does not happen. And, and that is... Right. I'm I'm delighted by it. I'm I'm completely delighted by it because of course you you fly in the face of history at that point to say we know when Franklin and Virgin met. Well, of course you did because here they met and said they didn't meet. And in that you can get all these little facets of information and that's really what the first episode was. It was here is the world, here are the players and here is what you need to know about them to ensure you can invest in their relationships. Uh you, you know that uh, Brienne de Joy is uh, young, hopeful, in a, a place where she feels she has no agency with a husband mm. who does not understand her, enters this young man in an old body who says and speaks the same language she does. And I, I don't speak the language of French. You know it very well. I don't do it terribly well in the show, but I speak the language of philosophy. I, I, mm. I appreciate the language of music. We see in one another and twin souls that will develop a kinship which will continue in our time in Paris and at Paris and prove her to be one of the most essential players in guaranteeing a treaty of alliance. Hmm. So the, these fascinating meetings, and I think that is what this episode was about, was about meetings. Even uh, my dear Temple uh, making acquaintance and friends with the Marquis de Lafayette, which I, I think is going to prove fascinating as Lafayette continues to join, join the courtiers of people requesting to become officers in America. The stage is set beautifully. The stage is set incredibly well, and now we may see how it plays out. Well, I, I'm glad that none of it, uh, none of what was portrayed in the episode flew in the face or felt um, inappropriate to, to, to your ears uh, in, in, in terms of, because that's not always the case uh, with, no, it's television first, shows and reproductions. It's, it's also the first one of these we're doing, and if I, yeah. I would be a very poor diplomat if I came out straight away with. <laughs> well, there. I mean, you know, there there are the some some viewers of this kind of content that are out to sort of nitpick to try to find specific things, and I did found one thing. Did you? But I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure is uh, an anachronism, but I think it may be. Um, in the office in Versailles, of the form, uh, uh, there is a giant map on the wall. The, the office we, we go into several times. Um, I think it's uh, the one in Versailles. It could have been the one that, that they were meeting in in secret at the very end. I'm not sure that, that was in a different location. Um, but there, Alaska is very well uh, uh, mapped, or the coast of it. Is very accurately mapped on that map on the wall. And I'm not 100 percent sure that that was the case. That at that I mean, year, at that point, that was well documented. So, what's what's fascinating? We, we tend geographically to make landfall eastwards and move west. That's our, yeah. our linear considering. And of course, I, I've only traveled through the eastern part of the United States. The most westwards I ever traveled was during my time as Colonel Franklin during the French and Indian War. Uh, but what's fascinating is when we look to, say, the island of California, which is what it's often referred to vernacularly at my time, uh, Alta California and Baja California, the fort and settlement of Los Angeles was founded in 1781. Um, the city of San Diego, 1769. The papist missions established all throughout continuing their missions. A prime reason why Los Angeles was founded was because Spain was recognizing English influence and Russian influence and interest in the western portion of the United States. Mm. So Russia, that denotes, and, and I, have no, I have no source to back this up, so you pardon me for speculating, but I, I was a printer for 
30 years speculating was my business. It's also made me used, used to people picking things apart. Uh, but if Russia was speculating, of course, in the new world, that brokers some degree of awareness. Now, I know not if it geographically should fit. And certainly, if it was demarcated Alaska, that brokers some suspicion. But I, 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 I did not pay a great deal of attention to the map. So I'll have to <laughs> look at it a second time. Uh, it was one of the scenes, because I do not speak French either, it was one of the scenes that I was re-watching to make sure that I got all of the uh, 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 subtitles. I was reading Which all of the it, subtitles correctly. <laughs> is, is this an innovation of, of modern technology, and is there an, a practical application in reality? Because I was, I was incredibly pleased. The printed were perfectly there to translate at the moment. It said, Ooh. isn't it remarkable, isn't it? That's a and we have, oh, so we have a uh, insight from the chat here. Um, we have, uh, uh, you know, the viewers are live chatting with us. And, and uh, Dr. Austin Mensmer, who is a plant ecologist, <laughs> said Alaska was discovered in 1741 by Vitus Bering and George Steller. So 1741. Now, I am nitpicking. This, I'm doing the thing that I said some, uh, 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 when viewers are not watching in good faith, <laughs> do. <laughs> I am nitpicking. You're, but you're, it simply to be a playing, scene I you're twice. playing the role. You, you're simply being yeah. the foil to the conversation. And you, 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 I think you are correct, uh, Dr. Mensmer, but um, I will have to check to see if any French maps at the time, because it's on a wall. The map is like 10 feet tall. <laughs> I'm curious as to when that was produced, like those maps were produced uh, and put in there because it was a very accurate, full map of, of uh, it wasn't demarcated Alaska, but the shape was correct-ish. Um, but, oh, and the expedition was Russian. So Dr. Franklin, you are correct in that it was a, a Russian um, in interest in the West Coast of North America. Dr. Franklin, did I lose you? You did. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I think you may be frozen. Give me one moment as I endeavor to. Yeah, and so for those of us, uh, those of you just joining us, um, if you, what is happening now? We are doing. We'll be joined by Dr. Franklin again shortly, um, but we're doing a live reaction to the first episode of Apple's TV show Franklin um, with none other, none other than the doctor himself. Um, who I thought would be able to provide some interesting insight into uh, the show. That is not what you're going to get in, uh, from a lot of other places. But thank you for joining. Um, thank you for listening. Please feel free to uh, ask any questions in the chat. And then, in addition, uh, please subscribe to the Dr. Franklin Has a Podcast. In addition to being a printer and a philosopher and an inventor, he is also a podcaster because aren't we all these days? And he has a wonderful podcast called Let's Be Frank, which is produced in co-production with uh, my company, Primary Source Media, uh, where he uh, breaks down different parts of his life using primary sources in a really fascinating and entertaining manner. So you should definitely go check that out. It's available wherever you're pod you uh, listen to your podcasts. And as well, a video version of the podcast is available on this channel, so you can subscribe here and hit that bell so you get the notifications when those episodes go live and i believe an episode will be going live right after this live stream is finished so we will hopefully get the doctor back here at some point otherwise i will just be continually vamping for time but just my overall reaction to the show i was actually shocked that i didn't realize that apple was going to drop three episodes so we only plan to talk about episode one, which we will be doing, um, finishing up shortly. But uh, I don't know what our cadence is going to be for the rest of the reactions. I think we'll probably do them. We were going to do them once a week along with the episode drops. But since there's three to start, we might try to up our cadence a little bit so we can get caught up because uh, we'd rather be watching and reacting to the episodes that are current. And... Let me see. Producer Pat, uh, how are we doing on the doctor? As we wait for the... Oh. I don't think the uh, live stream can hear you. Yeah, the audience can't hear you. <laughs> ah, 
All right. Well, oh, wait. There he is. The doctor has returned. Thankfully, I think. He has entered the live stream. Oh, there he is. Guys, my sincerest apologies, my friends. Oh, no. By all means, it's, uh, listen, you, you invented electricity. Invented. Um, they did make that joke in the episode. A, you're, simply, you're simply coining what the French said. I make yeah. a remark about that, that the French <laughs> think I invented electricity, which I won't refute. They were, you know, there's actually a really interesting perspective on, and they did a really good job of showing uh, how excited the French were about America. Um, and I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to this, uh, Dr. Franklin, but on, on the podcast that I host, Too Complicated for History, we did an interesting conversation uh, about what the French called Americanist, like people who were interested and excited about America at the time, and Mar the Marquis and, and, a, and a bunch of other the f other folks in the television show um, are uh, part of that cohort that are very fascinated by the idea of Republican politics um, and this new country that's emerging and have a very, um, uh, let's say, rosy view uh, of, of what will be the United States. Um, so if, if anyone a, watching wants to check that out, uh, you can find um, the episode title. I'm forgetting exactly what it was, but I believe it's what, what the French thought of America. Um, and it was during our se in season one of Too Complicated for History. Anyway, welcome back, Doctor. Thank you. And it's fascinating to consider, isn't it, that myself and Temple are the only two Americans who have been demonstrated in the show right. up to this point, um, which brokers the question, are we going to see others? Are we going to see uh, Mr. John Adams in, in the show? Are we going to see Silas Dean? And how are they going to be portrayed in contrast? But I think the show demonstrated it very well, and, and it shows my deliberate nature to... Um, to demonstrate what an American is in a completely fictitious way. The, the author of the book this show is incredibly inspired from talks about um, Franklin dressing uh, as a farmer, as a man who lived his entire life in the city, and it's, it's deliberate. This uh, fur cap uh, adorning oneself as sort of a pioneer philosopher, it's a, a very deliberate uh in your time you'd call it uh public re relations and marketing <laughs> uh which is the the savvy that i bring when i i come to france i advertise what an american is and why it should be uh prized above I I any other title yeah it's actually beaumontier says it outright in the episode you are something new in the world of men an american and i actually loved that one Love that line because uh, you didn't live to see it. But the context in which that we live current, like in the 21st century now, is one in which America, the concept of America, has ballooned into something so much larger than I think would have even crossed the founder's mind, uh, you know, uh, at the time. And it's almost as if we can't see the forest for the trees. The the context, the world in which we live was built at this time. And the idea that it was new or interesting or radical or remarkable in any way is strange and difficult for us to sort of wrap our heads around. Uh, so I thought that was, it was a nice, I, I thought, really appreciated that moment where they took the time to say that. That's remarkably well said. It's remarkably well said. It's almost as, like a, as if I've said it before. It's a, <laughs> a, po a point that I've made several times on the podcast. <laughs> If you say something pithy once, say it again for a larger crowd. That's very good advice. Have you said that before? I might have. <laughs> well, Dr. Franklin, thank you. Um, uh, your technical difficulties aside, um, thank you so much for joining me. Are you excited for the rest of the series? I'm thrilled. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. A and uh, it's a wonderful stroll down memory lane. And I, I think uh, an individual who loves history will derive a considerable amount from it. And I think those who are unfamiliar with history uh, will see things in a new light. Uh, mm. it's, a, it's a joyful thing to watch. And those opening credits, I, I, I was mesmerized by them. Yeah, did you, did you like the, puppet, the puppetry? I did, I, I, I did. The, the ships, the galleon, which would uh, turn to the bell pool, which that's the, uh, the pardon me, I'm forgetting her name, uh, but the Corf American, the, the uh, 
ship on the wig was mm. uh, originally called the Belle Pool. It was a, a fashion after a great French battle. The, the galleon turning into the peruke and the hot air balloon and, and just the, um, the remarkable intrigue. It, it makes the story seem so much more exciting. <laughs> well, I, it is exciting. <laughs> it is, you know, the, the excitement of, of uh, statecraft, diplomacy, uh, the, the, the nitty gritty of, of the war that you don't always get to see, um, but is always behind the scenes. Uh, so I'm also incredibly excited um, to check out the rest of the series, to watch the rest of the series, and to continue these conversations with you as we watch the episodes and go through the show. Um, so for anyone watching that wants to join uh, us along, we will be doing more of these. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know when we go live again. This is the our first ever live stream, and uh, you know I'm very, very pleased uh, at uh, how it's gone so far. And um, also, please subscribe to Dr. Franklin's podcast, Let's Be Frank, uh, which, like I said, is available wherever you get your podcasts and also in video version on this channel. So again, like and subscribe. Thank you so much, Dr. Franklin, for being here. Looking forward to yeah, talking to you pleasure. again. Your humble and obedient servant. See you next time. All right. Take care.